Hey guys, I'm Connor Hance, and welcome to Enhanced Pickleball. Today we're gonna to go over five deceptive shots that you can use in your matches to get cheap and easy points. You need to make sure that you don't use these shots too often or else your opponents will catch on. However, if you use these shots at the right times, then you can take your opponents off guard and get some free points. We hit a secret giveaway in this video, so make sure to watch it all the way through. Grab your paddle and let's go. All right, at number five on the list, we have the Flick Speed Up. This shot's generally used in a dinking situation where all four players are at the kitchen. All we're gonna do is take back our paddle like we're getting ready for a normal dink. Then at the last second, we're gonna use our wrist to flick the ball and take our opponents off guard with power. Doing a speed up like this is a lot more effective than if you take a bigger backswing. Cause if we use a bigger backswing, it's a lot easier for our opponent to predict what we're gonna do. You can do this on the forehand or backhand side, but in my experience, most players prefer to do this on their forehand. That said, you can still do this very effectively on your back end too. Your best bet in terms of where you're hitting this shot is usually gonna be down the line. One of the main situations that I see people using this in is when they're in a cross court dinking rally. After the player goes cross court a few times, they make it look like they're gonna go cross court again. But at the last second, they use the flick speed up directly at the unsuspecting player in front of them. The down the line speed up's generally more effective than the cross court because the person's closer to you, so they have less time to react. Put that together with the fact that they might not be ready for the ball, and there's a good chance that you'll win the point. If you go right at the person, then try to aim for their right shoulder. This is the toughest spot for them to react to. You can also hit this shot directly down the middle, which will be extremely effective too. Overall, the flick speed is one of the most effective ways to use deception in pickleball. And if you use it in combination with our number three on the list, you'll have your opponents off balance the whole game. We'll get into what that tip is later in the video. The number four shot on our list is the disguise drop shot. You can use this shot in a variety of different ways, but the main idea is that your opponents will be back and they'll give you an easier shot while you're up. On this shot, you'll take your paddle back as if you're gonna hit a heart, but at the last second, you'll slow down and hit it super short. The shot works very good against players who don't move well. If you're playing someone who's really fast, you may wanna use this shot less. So generally, there are three different situations where you're gonna use this shot. The first is off of the bounce. If your opponents are back and they accidentally hit the ball too high on the drop, you can fake the drive and hit it short at the last second. The fake here is key. If they can tell that you're gonna hit this shot, that could give them the extra head start that they need to get there. So make sure that you disguise it well with a normal looking drive take back. The second situation that you use this shot is off a higher, easier volley. If your opponents pop up the ball between your shoulders and hips, usually your best bet is to go hard at their feet. Sometimes though, you could fake the take back that you'd use on a harder volley and drop it short, just like we did in the last example. The last way that we could use this shot is off of an overhead. If you get an overhead in a game and your opponents are back, usually they're gonna move even farther back to give themselves time to react. This gives you the perfect opportunity to drop the ball. All you need to do is take back your overhead like normal and then go for a slow and short shot at the last second. The occasional use of a drop shot is a super effective way to keep your opponents off balance and guessing what you're gonna do next. At number three on our list, we have the lob. The main way that people use lobs is when all four players are at the kitchen. If you're back and your opponents are up, then it'll be a little bit harder to make the ball go over their heads. If we're at the kitchen in a dinking situation, then this shot's a lot easier to pull off. In terms of how we hit it, if we're dinking, we'll use a very similar technique to our wrist flick speed up. The key is that you don't make it look like you're gonna lob. So all you're gonna do is take the paddle back like you're gonna dink, then at the last second, flick the ball up over the other team's head. If you haven't hit this shot before, then you definitely wanna practice it, because there's a fine line between hitting it too soft and too hard. If you hit it too soft, then your opponents will have an easy overhead. And if you hit it too hard, then you'll miss the ball long. So make sure that you have the power down before you use this in actual games. Whenever you're hitting the lob, it's usually smarter to try and go over the player's backhand. If you go over the forehand, that gives them more of an opportunity to hit an overhead. So try your best to hit it over the player's backhands if you can. Similar to our last shot, this is the type of ball that's super effective against a specific type of player. If you're playing against someone that doesn't move well or that doesn't have a good overhead, then the lob will be highly effective. If your opponents are fast and have good overheads, these shots will still work, but it's gonna be a little bit harder to pull it off. When used properly though, the lob can be one of the best deceptive shots to use in pickleball. All right guys, tip number two, the poach. 
This is where you're at the kitchen and you cross over to your partner's side to pick off a volley that you usually fire at the opposing players. If you use this shot at the right time, then it can be highly effective. The main way that I see people using this shot is when they're the serving team. When one player is hitting their third shot, the other player creeps in and makes their way to the kitchen. If the third shot is good and one player is back, then the opposing team will usually try to go to the player who's still back. The player who's at the kitchen will anticipate this and will cross over to try to pick off the ball out of the air. You can run this play regardless of whether or not the player hits a drop or a drive on their third shot. However, it is common to do this off of a good drive where the net player pops it up. The downside of using the poach is that if your partner hits a bad third shot and you've already committed to it, there's a chance that you won't get an easy shot. The net people can just kill it at you or hit the ball to the open court. Even if your partner hits a good third shot, they might just hit a ball that's too difficult to poach off of. The other time that you can poach is if your partner doesn't come in off of their return. They generally should come in, but in the event that they get too backed up, your opponents will likely try to hit their third shot to them. This could be the perfect opportunity for you to poach and try to hit the ball hard at their feet as they make their way in. Taking all this into account, just know that poaching is a risky play, but if you use it in the right way, it can be an awesome addition to your game. On to our number one shot of the day, the infamous spin serve. If you've been playing pickleball for a while, then you've probably come across this shot. If anyone that you've played has used it, then you probably know that it's super annoying. Essentially, when you're using this shot, you're spinning the ball with your hand so that when the serve bounces, it jets off in one direction. As of 2022, you're only allowed to spin the ball with one hand, which definitely made learning the serve more difficult. The serve is so effective that the PPA Pro Tour actually banned it altogether. I don't want to get too much into the technique of how to use it today, but just know that there are a few different ways that people use their hand to get spin on their serve. The main way is the snap technique. This is where you use your middle finger and thumb in a snapping motion that's very similar to the way you snap your fingers. The second way is by lodging the ball between your fingers and using more of a flicking motion like this. Your goal is to try to make the ball spin parallel to the direction that you're trying to make it bounce. To change the direction of the spin, all you have to do is change the direction that your hand is facing. I'd recommend that you try both of these methods and see which one of them works better for you. If you can get the spin serve right, it's definitely the most effective shot on the list. So make sure to try it out. If you made it this far in the video, then you're definitely the kind of player that wants to see quick results. If you want to see the top five fastest ways to improve your game, watch this. Bye.